Hey everyone, John from Motionworks here. I've just been working in Substance Painter on my Iron Man Mark III helmet, and I've been working on doing some subtle scratches. So I'm about halfway finished, but I thought I'd just record a quick uh, tutorial just to show you how I'm putting in these, uh, these subtle scratches into the metal. So I've done the front face, the gold, and I'm just going to switch that off. And I've just finished this top section here. I'm going to go and do this section here, red too. I'll turn these other sections off. These are the different texture sets that came in when I imported the file as an FBX from Cinema 4D. And these are based on the materials I used in Cinema. So take a quick look at this. We've got this folder here. Um, I actually did the Hulkbuster helmet prior to this one. And this is the steel that I used for Hulkbuster, which I felt was a little bit bright red for the Iron Man Mark III. So I started to create a different material, which I thought was more suitable. And you can see inside here, I have the base metal. Just holding down the shift key and using my right mouse button to just move the environment around. And to that, I've applied a fill effect. And the fill effect has both the color and the rough channels active. And for the roughness, I've just used this grunge dirt thin. And that's just given us a slightly grungy look to it. Above that, I have another fill layer with a, another fill effect. And I've used a slightly different red, more of a maroon. And I've also used a roughness channel in there with grunge dirt thin. So I've combined two sets of roughness to give me a little bit more organic look to my roughness just stack those one upon the other and then I took that and I dropped it back on top of the original red steel and I thought that actually gave me quite a nice look so in building up a look that you like is generally not done with one layer or two layers it generally takes a fair few layers to get it quite right so now I want to add the scratches so what I need to do is create a new fill layer I'm going to move that to the top. I'm naming these deep scratches because I want these to be deep enough to reveal the silver below the red. If you've watched Iron Man, you'll know that Mark II was a silver suit and then Mark III was painted red and gold. So. I guess I presume that there would still be silver underneath that. So I want to reveal some of that. So I want to come down here and turn on some of my channels. I don't want normal. Uh, let's see. I do want height. And for roughness, I want to make this fairly bright. Make this metallic. And just make it a little darker. I can always go through and adjust this a little bit more later. Maybe make that a little bit brighter. Something like that. Okay, so now I want to reveal this silver with some scratches. So I want to add a black mask. And to that I want to add a fill. And to the fill I just come up here and choose it from up here. To the fill, I want to add some scratches in. Come up a little bit higher here. So I want to choose Grunge Scratches Rough. I can find that one. There we go, this one here. Now you can see this is looking pretty low res, and it's good to work low res at some times, but there comes a point when you're making fine adjustments that you're going to have to increase the resolution. So I'm going to just go into my texture set settings and change this from 1024 up to 4096. I'll just pause for a moment while that's recalculating. Okay, so now you can see we've got a lot more detail in there and it's going to be much easier to work with this. Now, first of all, I think the size is too large. So I want to go to my UV scale and just increase the size. 
that's going to bring the size of those scratches down. Not that much. Probably to about, let's see. I don't want very many scratches at all. So the ones I do have, I want to be fairly obvious. Maybe something like that. Now, this particular grayscale image has some settings. So I want to decrease the quantity of scratches. A little goes a long way with this. I don't want this Iron Man suit to be particularly roughed up, but I do want it to have some damage. I don't want the dust, so I'm going to come down to the dust settings and just bring dust intensity right down. Something like that. Obviously, this is all parametric, so it can be adjusted later if need be. Scratch length, I don't want it to be too long. Maybe something like that. Maybe add a few more. And make that a little bit longer because I'm going to use a paint effect in a moment to adjust these. Obviously it's slower working at uh, 4K, but you really need to when you're doing this kind of stuff. Well, I do, because I need to see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I want to add a paint effect to the mask. So I'm going to right click and choose add paint. Don't want to paint directly on the mask itself. It's better to paint on a paint layer. It's far easier to control and to make adjustments to it. So I've got a dirt brush. You can see here under brushes, I've chosen dirt too. Now I need this to be black. And something I've been doing more recently is actually painting while I'm viewing the mat. And I can do that by holding down Alt or Option on the Mac and clicking. Now I can see the scratches much more easily. So I'm using my Wacom. I'm just going to come in and start adjusting those scratches. I need to make sure I've selected the paint effect, otherwise nothing's going to happen. Okay, so now I can come and start adjusting. So I'm going to get rid of some of the bigger ones while I'm looking at the mat. What you really don't want is consistently spaced scratches all over the object because that looks really fake. Also, I think it's important to think about direction as well. Less likely to have vertical scratches, I reckon. That one's good. As I said, a little goes a really long way with this. You can get fairly close using the parametric properties as we saw, but you just can't get it all the way there. So it's good to go parametric as far as possible. And then you really have to come in and start working on masks and fine tuning to get this looking right. I don't want big heavy scratches right next to the edges of these parts of the helmet. When I've got this just about right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to view the actual layer. So there we go. So now I can come in a little bit closer. And I'm just going to hold down the control key and move my left mouse button to the left just to decrease the flow. And then my right mouse button just to decrease the size. And this way I can break these up like that. Don't know if I want that one. Just don't want it to look too uniform. Don't want too many up here because I've actually got this layer above. And I just don't think it would look very good if there's too many scratches around there. Wouldn't get quite as many around the back, I reckon. Just keep adjusting. Obviously, if I press X and I go for white, then I'm going to start adding 
the silver in. I don't want to do that. I think these kind of ones look really fake where it hits the edge and just disappears. It's better to, to feather those out. I've been using Substance Painter for a couple of years now and I don't use it every day but uh, each time I do work in Substance Painter I get a little bit faster. When I've created something like this, generally I'll save it as a smart material or a smart mask and that'll allow me to use it in the future on different projects. It's really nice how you're choosing the color channel in here reveals that silver. If I come in here and I turn off the color channel then we basically have nothing. I should actually go in and I should actually adjust the height too. You can see there isn't actually any height at the moment. I think I need to just decrease the height amount like that. Forgot to do that. That looks really nice, doesn't it? And this will probably mean we have to just knock them back even a little bit more. Just really got to do it to taste. I tend to be a little bit heavy handed with my grunge. I guess you just got to really imagine how the object has been used and that'll dictate how much wear and tear. Obviously reference images are really important as well. Doesn't matter about these ones on the top because they're hidden by other panels. a few too many around here. Using the mouse at the moment, I need to get back onto the Wacom, it's much easier. You want to put them where they would be logical. Like I don't think you'd have too many scratches in this recessed area here. So it takes a little bit of work to get this looking just right. But as I mentioned, you want to stay parametric as long as possible. And only then come in and make the fine adjustments. There's too many on this side. And I don't think I'd have one in there either. I'll probably come back and adjust that some more. Let me just turn these other layers on. haven't done red 3 and red 4 yet. I split all the red sections up in uh, sub in 3D coat when I unwrapped this just to make sure that I had distributed the, uh, the UV islands across a number of different maps otherwise my texel density would have been too low. I wanted this to be reasonably high. See I've only got a few subtle ones on the very front. I could even add a few deeper ones in there. I'll probably come back. What I find is when I'm doing this I'll do a section and then I'll move on to something else and then I'll like what I've done there and it means I've got to come back to the other section and make adjustments. Let's have a quick look at this in iRay. As you can see it's a big difference when you view it in iRay. And I will be taking this across 
back across to Cinema 4D and using Redshift to light this. I have more control over the lighting. But you can see it's fairly subtle. I haven't added any dirt or um, any dust yet. I'm not sure exactly how much I will add. But a little goes a really long way. So obviously this isn't finished yet, but uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of how I approach adding some scratches into this kind of metal. For now, this is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.